humans build walls, it's almost an invitation to find a way through the wall. Living things can always find a way through a wall. Uh, the wall hasn't been built that a living thing can't penetrate. Whether it's a weed, whether it's a person, whether it's a, you know, a, a critter, a rodent, whatever. Why build them? Why bother? This is such an important issue and topic for all of us. Not just the people that it's directly impacting, but for every human being who is a fellow citizen of those people who are threatened. I was very inspired by what she did in Venice with the subject of uh, refugees and, uh, you know, people fleeing their countries in this difficult time. So when she announced she was going to do the wall, it, it immediately inspired me. And that it was going to be in Pershing Square inspired me as well because I've always had a, a special feeling about Pershing Square or town squares in general. People got, got together and in those get-togethers they talked politics, and they talked religion and all those taboo subjects. And so the idea of doing that in Pershing Square about the wall, which is a major emblem of our time, uh, appealed to me. And I thought it was great to come together in what the Greeks called the Agora, the town square, uh, a place to come together to talk about what separates us. I see what she's doing. To me, it serves many purposes. I see it as a border, as a wall on the border. And I also see it as how people, their hands, are embracing the ideas of freedom. I don't care who you are or how you came here. If you're here, you belong here. If you're here, you're my neighbor. If you're here, where else would you be? So. We're in downtown LA. I read about Lily's project and I thought it was marvelous. So I decided to come join it. I chose this position for my hand to be an open-handed, to be open to experience. I think her idea of putting this on the fence is wonderful because actually I think there's a kind of paradox that she's putting them on a fence in order to help us tear down fences. We don't need fences, we need bridges. And I read about the project and thought it was a fabulous idea to talk about a wall that's inclusionary as opposed to keeping people out. And so I wanted to be a part of it. Uh, Nancy told me about the wall and I thought how great it would be to show hands coming together instead of separating. And that we are all, regardless of race, color, creed, ethnicity, we're all one and our hands need to be together.
people to know that they're a part of something, for them to know that they actually have an impact and that they can make a change. Because so often people feel that they're helpless, but if you can take a hand and know that your hand in something makes a difference, then yeah, obviously you know that you've participated in something, you've had an impact on some form of social change. And I think that's so important these days, just being able to appreciate the humanity of us all. And hands are everything, our carbon footprint, our handprint, you know, that's what makes us individuals. And if we're able to say, I'm a person, you're a person, obviously like all lives can't matter unless black lives matter, like this is, everything so how can we band together using our hands using the footprint that we have on this planet it's just really important for us to have our hands in everything that we can to be an agent of change without overwhelming ourselves and just be grateful for the fact that we still have our voices that we still have our minds that we still have our hearts and we can use our soul to know our purpose and where we need to be placed and do the best that we can to be wonderful beautiful people in the world and do great things as best we can with smiles <laughs> and hugs. I'm Darius Nile, and this is my hand. And I chose this position because this is the hand that kept me alive when everyone gave up on me, when nobody wanted me, and all I had was myself. And I clawed my way to the top. And I'm still here, and I've survived everything that's come my way. So this is my hand. And it's also a hand of kindness, because I've tried to be kind to virtually everyone I've met in this city, despite how they treat me. And I believe in the power of touch. And I was just passing by today, and I, wanted, I was curious to see what these artists were doing. And I sat down in the name of art, because I will always volunteer for artists, and in the name of art. My hand sort of in protest to make my mark that the wall should not happen on the southern border here. Thank you. And I came here today to the immigration court because I'm an immigration lawyer, and we saw this installation, I guess it's called, in Pershing Square, where this artist has built a wall, and she is attaching hands to the wall. This is it really interesting to me because I've actually got a piece of the Berlin Wall in my home. These hands to me signify all the people that are trying to get in that can't get in. And this is my hand cast model. The reason I chose to make it into a shape of a gun is because right now there's a lot of um, criticisms and uh, there's actually a social wall between people that want gun control and don't want gun control. My position on it would be that uh, I'm actually on the wall because both sides have uh, very reasonable arguments and the wall seems to be the, the middle ground between uh, the two sides of the social spectrum. What I love most about this project is connecting with other people and that's what this project is about, connecting and bringing people together and making a difference. I decided that I would do this in honor of the children um, who are very near to my heart, very dear to my heart. And two reasons, I selected this particular casting because I wanted to emphasize love, love in our hearts for one another, love that stretches abroad, love that stretches abroad beyond color barriers, races, disabilities, gender, and also prayer, praying for others supplicating, 
um, adoration and being thankful of what we have available to us and also the work of our hands. As individuals, we tend to lose sight of what we do and what we have to offer, but it is the works of our hands that get those jobs done. Uh, I think the piece as a whole is something really beautiful and inspiring, and I think given the current socio-political climate, it's super necessary to find more ways of creative expression to show unity and uh, kind of partnership, love, community, support, compassion, all these different um, intrinsic values with one another and so I feel like our piece is one of those. And how did we choose how we wanted to do it? Mm. Praying for the world to be a better place, like praying for a world to be a better place. Exactly. And then we said it was kind of like a high five but actually we're not religious but we kind of are praying for humanity to get better. And I like that it's going on the fence, we want to put it on the top of the fence because we think fences are to be climbed over. We're not cool with fences generally, or walls. So we want it to be on the top of the fence. And that represents children climbing over fences and having fun rather than some of the worst things that you could imagine fences are for. Hi, I'm Bill Cooper. And these are my friends, Steve Johnson, Nolan Lucas, and Will Hodgins. And we came together today to uh, participate in this project, this art project at Pershing Square with Lily Miller. And I think, I guess what it means to us, we're, we're long time good friends and we've done a lot of, a lot for our community and the gay community as well. And I think uh, basically we just want to say that we are still going to be supporting each other and, through the rest of our lives. And but I'm stuck with you for the rest of my stuck, life. You're stuck with me for the rest of your life. other ways of dealing with the situations that we are confronted with, you know, as, as well as our own personal ones that we have to overcome and that we build for 